Williams, present yourself to be cuffed. I'm not cuffing up, man. Are you cuffing up? You're going in the chair. You're not putting me in that chair. We told you stop kicking the door. You keep kicking the door. You be kicking the door for hours. You're going in the chair. I'm not going in that chair, man. I've seen what y'all do. You're not putting me in that chair. Oh, you're going and we're coming in. So you need to go ahead and turn around and get yourself cuffed up before we spray you and come in. Look, man, I'm sorry. Look, I won't kick the door no more. Please don't put me in the chair. Please. You're going in the chair. Look, man, I told y'all I'm sorry. I'm not going to kick the door no more. I don't even care if I eat now. Forget the tray. I was snatching ass. I'm dead ass wrong. I should have listened. I'm copping deuces. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no problems. Please don't put me in that chair. Present yourself to be cuffed before we spray you. I'm not cuffing. I'm not going in the chair, though. Just y'all go away. Look, my bad. I'm sorry. Ha <laughs> ha, I joke funny, funny. Ha <laughs> ha, I know kick the door no more. Y'all have a good day, man. Y'all really gonna put me in the chair? Nah, man, I'm not cuffing up. I'm not gonna make this easy for y'all. Y'all gonna have to come in here and do what y'all gotta do and y'all gotta get me. I don't, you know what? Go ahead and spray, man. I don't even care if y'all spray. I'm not going in that chair, man. You got to be the stupidest mother. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life and we're back. So before I start today's video, I got some things to say. And it's important that I get this clear and that I say these things before we hop into both of today's stories. I enjoy what I do. It does take a mental toll at times doing the prison content. Because in a sense, every time I do these videos... It's almost like a time machine. It's like I'm transported back to there. The way I thought comes back to service. Who I was in those moments comes back to service. The person I used to be, the things I endured, the things I saw, the anxiety, all that stuff comes in full-fledged. I try to laugh more when I do these videos now to keep from crying, if that makes sense. Sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. I've cried making these videos, like, I, it's been seen, I've, I've cried talking about dudes that I've lost along the way, and things that happened, I've laughed, I've smiled, I've been, you know, this is a roller coaster of emotions that comes with this, I enjoy knowing that I reach people, I enjoy knowing that I entertain people, I enjoy knowing that I educate people, I don't think anybody's ever watched one of my videos and says, hey man, that sounded like fun, I'm about to go get locked up, no, that is what I don't want to happen. I want to keep anybody and everybody. I don't care if you're young, old, black, white, male, female, whatever. I want to keep people from becoming part of the system, part of the, you know, the incarceration rate that we have in the world. With today's videos, we are going to speak on the COs, the correctional officers, the guards, and just their personalities and some of the brutal things I've seen done. One of the things I had done to me that was just inhumane. And another inmate that will get into his story. Now, before we start, this is kind of just a disclaimer and I want this to be known. Even after doing all that time, off and on my entire life, I don't hate correctional officers. I understand the job they do. I understand their purpose. And I can tell you firsthand that monsters are real. And there are guys that need to be overseen and that need to be kept incarcerated for the remainder of their life. There are some people that are just born different or something happens along the way in their life that messes them up, that makes them to where they can never be a part of what we do out here in this world. And if they are a part of this world, they're going to take lives. They're going to hurt people. People are going to suffer because of these men, these women. And they need to be there. So these guards serve their purposes. You have guards that come to work every day and it's just a job. It's just a job. Lieutenant Golden, I salute him, man. He was always super cool. He played fair with me. Sergeant Medina, he was a straight asshole, but he was a straight shooter. Came to me several times and said, look. I know you're tattooing, I've done heard, but I caught several people with fresh tattoos. Shut it down or I'm going to shut you down. You don't want me to come in there. I'm warning you, stop. I respected that. 
CO Sampler up in Riverside. Used to let me get pictures through the mail that I ain't supposed to get and other little things. Give me some leeway. Street dude. I respected him. There are guards I respect. Now, there are guards that are just despicable human beings that should never be put in a position of power. They shouldn't have a pet, much less be in control of a human being. They shouldn't have children. They shouldn't have spouses. And a lot of these guards have done things that should have put them in prison. But with the guard system, it's like this. You and all your homeboys are hanging out. One of your homeboys kills somebody or does something you don't like. You go tell on him, all your homeboys turn against you. It's the same thing with the correctional officers. They all work together. If you do something on your shift to an inmate that you shouldn't have done, and this guard goes and tells administration, now you got all the other guards looking at him like, yeah, okay, he's not one of us. He's put a target on his back. I just wanted to make all that clear before we started today's video. So it gives you a little more insight into just how I'm feeling, what I think, and my opinion on the matters. Like I said, they're not, they're not all bad. They're not. Some take the job way too serious. Some are very relaxed. And when we see that guard come on, we're like, yes, it's a good shift, man. We can... We can breathe. We ain't got to worry about being shaken down. Him in here every five seconds messing with people, disturbing us, looking for reasons to, to lock people up. And then you've got those ones that just, they've got chips on their shoulders. I don't know if the kids call them stupid at home, if the wife beats them up, slaps them around, whatever the case may be. But they come to work and they take out everything that they can't control, every issue they have at home. They take it out on us. So today we're going to be dealing with the brutality that comes from some of these guards. The inhumane treatment you can expect if you do time. It's not a story I'm too thrilled to tell. But with this being Jay Williams, that's the life of me being Jay Williams. My job is to entertain and educate. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to entertain y'all and educate you. At the same damn time. You know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So. Let's relive it. I can't even begin to tell you. How many cellmates. I've seen. Fight each other. You and dude are cool. Y'all kick it every day. Y'all do everything together. Y'all work out together. Y'all listen to music together. Y'all watch TV together. Become one of your best friends. In a place that you can't trust people, you found somebody that you rock with, somebody you kick it with, like, oh, that's my ace right there, that's my dude. You put your hands on him, I'm going to go upside your head. You find somebody you actually look at as a friend. Leave it at that. Me, personally, I'm not big into living in a cell with someone I call a friend. There's reasons. You and this guy might get along great outside the cell. He lives over there. You live over here. Y'all yell from door to door. Yo, what up, man? What you doing over there? What you watching? And y'all kick it. Y'all come out. Y'all kick it. But then each time you lock down, he goes to his cell. And you go to your cell. It creates that time of separation. Majority, a large majority of my fights have been with cellmates. What happens is you live in any small confined space with somebody for a long period of time. You start to find out things about them that you didn't know prior to living in the cell with them. It's the same thing with like relationships out here. You meet a man or you meet a woman. Everything's cool when y'all both have y'all's own apartment, your own house. Y'all live separate. Y'all go out. Y'all get along better. The moment y'all move in, you start to, you know, your little pet peeves kick in. She does this or he does that. Things that just start to get underneath your skin. If you're around each other too much, your skin starts to crawl. It's like, I just need to get away. You know what I mean? Have some me time. You moving a friend in the cell is exactly what I just explained. You may not know that he snores. Y'all were, were like this. Y'all were tight outside the cell. But now he snores. Sounds like there's a damn grizzly bear sleeping on the top bunk. Three o'clock in the morning, you're laying there wide awake. I'm going to kill him. I swear I'm going to kill him. I'm going to take this pillow. 
I'm gonna smother this son of a bitch, man. I can't take much more. Maybe if I if I shove this dirty sock in his mouth, he'll choke to death. Little things start to irritate you. It could be somebody's laugh. It could be them having dirty laundry piled up or the smell they put off. Little things that you didn't know about your homeboy now start to irritate you. Now, he feels like since you're friends, you shouldn't be coming at him like that. You shouldn't address anything he does. I mean, I thought we was better than that, man. For real, you gonna come at me like this? When you live with just a random anybody, you get your point across a lot more if you're not close like that. When it's your homeboy, he feels he's been disrespected. So now y'all went from friends, associates, whatever you want to call it, companions, buddies, to fighting in the cell because he does something that you just don't deem fit. One of my biggest pet peeves was people taking my stuff or touching my stuff without my permission. Dude gets comfortable, y'all meal up. You've told him several times, hey, man, just go in the locker and grab a chili. Hey, grab a tub of cheese, man. Hey, bring two pickles out. And hey, let's make something sweet. Grab two honey buns and two snicker bars. Now, he feels entitled. You done let him do it a bunch of times. But now he's done it without your permission. Now I'm in my feelings. Why are you in my locker, man? Why are you taking things without asking me? And what ends up happening is, no matter who wins the fight, nobody wins. You know what I mean? It's like Jay-Z said, nobody wins when the family feuds. When you're fighting with somebody that that you genuinely care about, that you look at as a friend, there's no winner in the fight. If you kick his ass, you still just lost your friend. If he kicks your ass, he still just lost a friend. So like I said, for me, it was always best that I just get put in a cell with whoever or somebody that I wasn't real close to. Like, all right, man, dude's all right. They can put him in here. But I didn't want to be in a cell with my homeboy. This first story takes place up Greensville. Early on in my bid, I saw, and this was in the same week that I got there, I saw what some of them guards were about. They took dude Smalls. In one of my videos, I talked about Smalls. And he was in handcuffs and he was arguing with the guards. And Smalls was built just like, like Baby Hulk. Like he was just about my height, but he was just wide. Had the big cannon, bowling ball shoulders, the big pecs. And this was straight out the jail. I was in the jail with the dude. Went from the jail to receiving, left receiving. Like it was crazy. He was the only person that actually took that entire trip with me. On the day that I got shipped from receiving, he was with me. He was on the same bus. We went to Greensville. I watched Smalls get into it. He's arguing with the guards, fighting with the guards, and they take him and they put him in handcuffs. He's standing there still running his mouth and the guard just loses his temper, runs up, wraps his arms around him, lifts him up off the ground and slams him backwards. The man's in handcuffs. His teeth hit the stairs and knocked all his teeth out. I remember when he stood up and his mouth was just gushing blood and the guard telling him, why you make me do that? I told you, shut your damn mouth. Sergeant come in, what happened? He started struggling, got away from me, fell and hit his mouth. But in reality, that wasn't what happened. He didn't do anything to cause them to knock his teeth out. That guard lost his cool. That guard had anger problems. He picked Smalls up, reverse suplexed him, and slammed his teeth right into the bottom step. This metal staircase of these yellow stairs just slammed his teeth right into it and broke all this dude's teeth out. Now, you know, I give props where props do. Dude was a pretty boy. You could tell that in the streets, he was somebody. He was getting money sent in. He stayed fresh. He got locked up in an all-white pair of Jordans. Still had his all-white J's on, the Laser Series. They came in. After they knocked his teeth out, took him out like nothing happened. That guard, that sergeant asked the other guards, what happened? He started resisting, slipped, and fell, and hit his teeth. Now, where we were positioned, where my cell at, was at the staircase. It's right there at my cell. My cell is... Two, two cells underneath the staircase over so I can directly see what's going on. Like, it's to the point that it was close enough that if I spit hard enough, I could have spit on them when they were fighting with Smalls, right? They carried him up out of there. No incident was report. He got a whole bunch of different charges, got his teeth all knocked. I'm talking all his teeth knocked out. When he, and when he was looking around, he was like, man, why are you... His lips are busted and the teeth, there's pieces of teeth still left in his gums and the other teeth are just cleared all the way out the top. So he just went from, from being a, a pretty boy to having a mouth that looked like something that belonged on a sewer rat. Like he eats concrete cookies or opens doorknobs with his teeth for a living. It looks like he hammers in nails with his mouth. They messed his grill 
up when they slammed him. Them guards continued to come right back to work every day. I watched them pop the door, let an inmate out. An inmate came out there, cleaned the teeth up, mopped the blood up, telling people, man, I'm going to keep these joints and see if Smalls wants them when he gets back. The teeth are broken. You can see where they're cracked in half, and it's just pieces of this man's teeth. That would be my introduction to how some of these guards up there were getting down. Now, it wasn't all of them. That Luckily, I moved from that building down to another building within the first few weeks, right? That's because it's just a transition building. Everybody starts off in this one particular pod until they figure out where you're going to be on the compound. I get shipped down to seven building to the Terror Dome, we called it. Now we're going to get into the why I spoke on the cellmate situation. At the time, we had these blood dudes, and it was not uncommon for them to share a cell. A lot of times, it would be two bloods in a cell. I've had cellmates that were blood, crip, GD, MS-13, and gangs you never even heard of before. I've celled up with any and everybody. With the bloods, they were known for clicking up. They wanted to have two bloods in the cell. If you was in a cell with a the blood, they were going to do their best to get you moved out. And a blood moved in there. Well, him moved out of there and into a cell with another blood. Well, we got a white dude on the top tier and a black dude on the top tier that's been sharing a cell now for a better part of maybe a month, maybe a little bit longer. And they've been trying to get this other blood dude moved that's in our pod with another dude into that cell. And there's ways you can do this. You can talk to the officers. Hey, man. Now, me and dude get along fine, but I prefer to have this dude in the cell with me. You know what I mean? I've stayed out of trouble. I don't give y'all no problems. Man, look out for the kid. Move, move my homeboy in the cell with me. They continue to do this. Other dudes, man, what's up? Y'all gonna move such and such to such and such? And what you're doing is you essentially start to become a nuisance. They get tired of hearing about it. Now, let me go ahead and get in the computer, make this damn bed move real quick, and swap these two guys so they'll leave me the hell alone so I can sit in here and play Sudoku or tic-tac-toe or do whatever I'm gonna do and not be bothered by these inmates. They make the move. At first, and it's always at first, Everything is fine. The first few weeks, these dudes, they come out. They Even when they're outside the cell, it's like they're inseparable. And I, I wasn't big on that. If I'm in the cell with you all day, when we come out the cell, that's what's up. We'll talk, yada, yada, yada. Don't be following me around this bitch. We've been locked in there all night together. The last thing I want is you posted up beside me like my adoptive child or like we're brothers. Like, hey, you go over there. I'm going over here. Unless we work out together or something, we ain't really got no business. Being together 24-7, we live in a cell together. These dudes attend their gang meetings. I've seen them violate people, take them in the cell, run down on them for stuff they shouldn't have done. Just the basic stuff that comes with the gangs. Then the whole living situation starts to get funky. Things start to get scary. These two dudes are not seeing eye to eye. And I don't have to be told that. I can see it with my own eyes. It went from them coming out the cell all the time and hanging out to when they come out the cell. The one dude can't wait to get out the cell. And these two different dudes are still in the same gang, but they split off in their own direction. That lets me know, all right, they're getting tired of each other. They're getting tired of dealing with each other and, you know, just everything that comes with being locked behind that door every single day in the presence of another man. It gets old. Slowly over time, they start to bickering. We can hear it, hear them up there in their cell. They're up above me, maybe four or five cells down the tier. So my cell's here, and they're situated down this way on the tier. I can hear them up there arguing throughout the night. Shaw, you, you don't know what you talk about, man. You sound stupid. You think you know everything. This happens. But why every time I say I did something, you got to say you did it better. If I say I got a Lexus, you had, you know what I mean, the Mercedes truck. If I said I had a gold chain, you had three gold chains. Bro, you was a crackhead on the street. You was a base head. You was a pipe head. They're up this bitch arguing. Now, I know when you hear it like that, when it's loud enough that I can hear it in my cell, that means it's only a matter of time before it comes to blows. If we're in a cell together, first of all, you're not going to stand in there and scream at me. I'm a grown-ass man. I'm a whole entire adult. A man just like you, hair on my balls and all that. Scream at me if you want to in this cell. I'm only going to let you do it a couple of times if you get away with the first time before I dig up in your mouth or you punch me in my face. But we're going to have to understand that you're going to respect me at all costs in here. You're not going to talk to me and belittle me like I'm a child. This starts to happen more and more 
and more to where at nighttime dudes is yelling out the door. Hey, y'all shut up, man. Stop arguing. Go to bed. It is two o'clock in the morning. Y'all been arguing since midnight. Y'all need to fight a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, shut up, man. What y'all up there arguing like two old women for or two old men? Go to bed. They go right back to arguing. They don't give a shit what nobody's saying about y'all go to bed. They got a whole gang behind them. Until one of them lifers and one of them dudes that really got some status in there speak up, then they'll quiet down. But in the heat of an argument, that's what'll get you at the door going, hey man, mind your business, man. Don't worry about what's going on in here. If I come down there when the doors pop, they keep going at it, keep going at it, arguing, arguing, arguing. We're outside one day and I see them getting ready to go over to the handball court. They didn't got to arguing on the rec yard and the dude told them, look, I guess y'all both blood. If y'all want to rumble, I allow it. Y'all go over to handball court and fight. As they're getting ready to go over to handball court and fight, officer comes around the side of the building. Got all these gang members standing there in this corner. It's a blind spot where the tower can't see and the guards can't see. As they're, they're heading to, towards the corner and the gang's already over there, they're going over there. These are cellmates. They're homeboys. Ace Boom Cone. That's my, you know, my dude right there. Well, that's just and got old. They're going over there to fight. Guard comes around the side of the building. He knows who the gang members are. Sees them all squatted up, 50, 60 deep, standing there. These two dudes going around. Hey, what y'all doing? Everybody, oh, I ain't nothing, man. They break off in different directions. The beef has not been resolved. They've now got to go in the building, lock in a cell together, where it's just mano y mano. It's just him and him. There is no guard coming to your rescue. There is no your homeboys and them breaking y'all up when one of y'all falls. Whatever's going to happen in there is going to happen in there. I assumed that this would happen soon as we went in. We go in, the two of them, just stay quiet. Not saying nothing to one another. Kind of like, you don't say nothing to me, I won't say nothing to you. It's an airplane flying over here. You don't say nothing to me, I won't say nothing to you. Stay out of my way, I'll stay out of yours. I don't mess with you, you don't mess with me. That's how we're living now. That night rolls around and it is late, late night. And I know it's, I can't remember the exact time, but it was well after midnight. I've been asleep and I hear all this commotion. I hear arguing, I hear yelling. I get up out of my bed, done it a million times, walk to the door, like, where's the fighting coming from? Who's fighting? And I can hear them up on the top tier. And they're fighting to the point that this is a solid concrete slab for a ceiling that separates my cell from the cells up above me. That slab is probably every bit of 12 to 14 inches thick. They're fighting up there and I can hear the slamming and the boom and the, the punching and the grunting and the, the sounds of both of their sneakers. They put the sneakers on, skirt, 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 fighting. I can hear the, the fist hitting flesh and the grunting and get off me. And they're, just, and they're rumbling, right? It's loud. He's got this dude against the door and they're rumbling. It's loud to the point that the officer in the control booth sees their light on in their cell, looks over, can see the shadows and them tussling back and forth through the crack in the door, through this hole in the door. She can hear the slamming. She knows they're fighting. She calls for officers. Officers ain't doing nothing this time of night. They're in the break room, doing rounds, just being sneaky, walking around the middle of the night with a flashlight, looking in cells. It has been several minutes. And when people tell you, man, we fought for five or 10 minutes, that's usually a lie. The average fight, when you get to fight with somebody, only lasts sometimes 30 seconds, maybe a minute. But when you're in a cell with somebody and there's nobody to break it up and you really hate that person or dislike that person, that fight can take place for several minutes. Y'all might stop and have finished the fight. He say something, man, boom, you punch him and y'all go back to fighting again. I know the guards are coming. I can see the guard in the control booth. She's going to come over to the intercom. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. And woke everybody up in the park because she's on the intercom now. She's going to turn the lights on in the day room. They turn those off at night. So it's bright as hell in here. These dudes are up there fighting. Maybe three, four minutes after she realizes what's going on, all these guards come running in. They got guards coming from every point and part of this section of the prison that aren't currently doing anything. If you're not doing that, get up off your ass and go over there and stop these two dudes from fighting. They come rushing in. The cell door opens, and now the two dudes have stopped fighting. They want to play it off like ain't nobody trying to go to the hole. But they both show signs of fighting. Both of them got marks, knots, blood on them, you know, ripped shirts. The cell's a complete mess from where they knocked everything off the countertop. Oh, they, they know they've been fighting. They go in, they get the first dude out, get him in handcuffs, and they got him standing outside, and they're talking to the other dude. I'm guessing the second dude was the one that more or less took the blunt of the fight and looked like he had lost. 
They're talking to him. And meanwhile, him and the other dude that's outside the cell, they get to arguing again. So the whole thing starts back up. And dude is the one dude standing there in handcuffs. And he's standing at the edge of the staircase right at the, and it's like 25 steps you got to go up to get to the second floor. Metal ass steps with a handrail that comes down and a brick wall beside it. The one dude that's not in handcuffs is steadily running his mouth and he's in the cell. And the other dude's standing at the edge of the tier right there in the handcuffs and he keeps bucking forward. Every time he bucks forward, his guard's trying to hold him, but he's dragging the guard. He's making the guard look stupid. We're all watching it. We're like, ah, you can't even control a dude that's in handcuffs. He's dragging you like dudes are just egging the situation on. After about the fifth time that the dude tries to buck and run toward the cell, which I don't know, maybe he's going to run in there and try to kick him or something or headbutt him. Couldn't do nothing. His hands are behind his back. There's so many officers in the cell that there's no way he can get to this man. They've been separated. He's probably 20 feet away from his cell. They tell him, hey, go ahead and take him up out of here, man. Take that guy, get him up out of here so that they'll stop fighting. So they'll stop arguing when we get the situation under control. So he's got the dude standing at the top of the staircase. And the dude, when he goes to try to lead him down the staircase, turns around and bucks, like bucks at him and tries to push by the guard again to run down to the cell in handcuffs. The guard takes him, spins him, puts him at the top of the staircase. When dude wanted to go spin and try to buck again, the guard just shoved him. If you've ever seen a movie of somebody fall down a staircase, that's a stunt person. That's an actor. Seeing somebody fall down a staircase that's handcuffed, down a metal staircase on top of that, that cannot put their arms out to try to break their fall, that cannot grab onto anything halfway down to keep from falling anymore. It's the equivalent of just throwing a rag doll down a staircase, a dummy. He pushed this dude. We all saw him push the inmate. We all saw him grabbing by his cuffs from the back and just shove him on down the staircase. He hit head over heels. He tumbled. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. I told you it's like 25 steps. Every one of those steps you hit is going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you bad. By the time he finally, boom, is splatted out on the bottom staircase, his shoulder was pushed all back. He's laying on this, this tiled, old, dirty, dingy penitentiary floor. There's blood all around him. His head's cracked. His face is cracked. There's blood on the stairs where every time he hit, he just fell down 25 stairs, pushed down 25 stairs, and hurt himself real bad going down them stairs. He's unresponsive laying at the back, of the, down at the bottom of the stairs. The other guards look over and he's like, yo, dude pulled away from me and fell. They saw what happened. We all saw what happened. Dude's in a pile. Yo, what the fuck? You just pushed dude down the stairs. That's some bitch shit. Why you push him down the stairs, pussy? We saw what you did. Yo, these blood dudes on the door. And hey, you can't never come back in here. We're going to kill you when you come in here. Man, you lost your damn mind. Bro, is he all right? Is he all right? And you got dudes in the cell that are around me that are gang affiliated looking out like, yo, he ain't moving, bro. He ain't moving. So now they call the higher up in. Sergeants, lieutenants start coming in. Medical comes in. This man's unresponsive. He's laying on the ground. He's not moving. They get him up, get him on a stretcher, and they rush him out. Here's the crazy part. They didn't even unhandcuff him. They laid him on the stretcher on his belly with his hands cuffed behind his back. They picked him up like he was just a dead deer carcass off the side of the road, put him on a stretcher, put the strap across him, and rushed up out of there. I continue standing at the door watching. I'm looking out. The light's on in the day room. I'm looking at the pile of blood. It's the seat from this dude's head. I'm looking at where you can see he was just laying, like just literally just laid out with his head cracked. I'm looking up at the guards at the top of the staircase, and they bring the other dude down the staircase and lead him out. They come back in, pack all their belongings up. Now that cell is completely empty. We end up getting some new guys in the cell. Well, the dude, that second dude that they took up out of there, he ends up coming back to our side of the yard. He doesn't come back to our building, but he comes back to our side of the yard. He comes, that means we share the same yard. We go to the same chow hall. We see each other in passing. Everybody gets to talking about how while he was back in the hole, the dude that he got to fighting with never showed up in the hole. Then when comes down, word comes down that he was taken to the infirmary. Then word comes back that he was taken from the infirmary to Southside Regional Medical Center, which is a hospital out there in Jarrett, Virginia, and Emporia that deals with stuff that the prison's just not, not equipped to deal with. Most of the doctors and 
things like that they got are not the brightest. They're working at the prison because they would never make it at a hospital or in private practice. So they send them, they get them jobs at the prison. A couple of weeks goes by. This dude was only in the hole, I would say, maybe 30 days. And then he was out maybe two weeks. We start hearing things through the grapevine, through what we call inmate.com, which is an in, inmate start gossiping that this dude's, this dude's family is trying to push a lawsuit against the prison. We're all out in the day room one day just doing what we do, and investigators come in. The investigators come in anytime a crime has been committed, something is suspected, and they tell us all lockdown. They start at cell one, and they start questioning dudes about what they saw that night. They don't get maybe three, four cells down, and every single inmate is telling them the same thing. A punk-ass guard threw that boy down the stairs. Now, he ain't far. He threw him down the stairs. We thought they were going to go cell for cell and get a statement from everybody. By the time they got to cell five, it is a consistent story. They know what happened now. There's no point in going to all 43 cells in here. We know what happened. All the guards are saying the dude snatched away from, from, the, from the other guard and that, that he fell down the staircase, lost his foot, and then fell. They spoke to 10 different inmates in the first five cells, and they're all saying, nah. That guard pushed that man down the stairs. That man was handcuffed, turned around to try to rush back to the cell, and the guard just spun him around and just shoved him down the staircase. We get word the dude cracked his head and died at the hospital. He had a hemorrhage, something going on inside his head. When he banged his head on all those steps and smacked it on that hard concrete floor at the bottom of the stairs, cracked his skull, internal bleeding, like hemorrhaging inside of his brain, swelling on the brain. The boy ended up dying in the hospital. Nothing was done. The guard that did that, they took him off our unit and put him on the other side of the yard. And do you know why? Because four officers stating that the man slipped and fell, the man pulled and fell, is way more credible than 10 inmates. If all 86 of us would have said we saw him push him, it still wouldn't have mattered because the other four guards, and not including the one guard that actually pushed him, all five of them are saying, Nah, he fell. Our words are no good because we're convicts. We're inmates. We're all liars, right? We've all conspired to get this guard locked up. We've all made this big fictitious story up about how he got pushed down the staircase when they're all saying he slipped and fell. Dudes wrote emergency grievances. They pushed paperwork on it. Dudes started trying to write Atmore Drive, which is the DOC headquarters here in Richmond, letting them know. Hey, man, we seen that guard shove that boy down the stairs. That boy that cracked his head and died over at the hospital. When they took him out of there, he was unresponsive. And that's why. Because his skull was cracked. They did nothing. We get You'd push the paperwork, and they'd either not come back or would come back and say something along the lines of, this is being investigated, it's being looked into. Nothing ever came of it. That young man had a family out here in the world. He had broken laws. Yeah, true indeed. He was doing his time, true indeed. Him and his homeboy had already fought several times that night, so he'd already been through and since his own personal war up there rumbling. But you don't, you don't ever think that when you go to prison or you get locked up or something like that, that it might not be an inmate who takes you up out of here. We all, as convicts, as inmates, have one goal, and that's just to get home if that's possible to try to get through each day and just live it and do it day by day. But you would never think that you'd go to prison and lose your life to the hands of a guard. The case was closed. Internal investigation didn't take very long. It was ruled an accident, and they kept it moving. Even though 80-some people were telling them it's not an accident, they didn't listen to us. The dude left behind a whole entire family, man. A mother, father, brothers, sisters, friends, uncles, aunts, nephews, nieces, children. He went to prison for a couple years. Never finished his sentence. Never made it home. Died in Southside Regional Hospital. I looked at them guards in a whole different light after that. If at any point I ever feared that they were going to do something to me, that's the moment I strike. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not about to hit no guard. But if I really feel like I fear for my life or something, 
You're not about to, to have me laid up with a brain hemorrhage, man. Those are those guards that just need to be mentally evaluated, that should never be in a position of power. That guard should have never, if he was anywhere, he should have been in the control tower with a with a Nerf gun. He shouldn't even have had real bullets. But now they had him working the floor, dealing with inmates. And it, uh, like I've said, it always ends bad. I have no problem, zero problems, admitting to my downfalls, admitting to my misconduct, who I've been in life, things I've done, things I'm responsible for. Part of growing is owning up to who you are, who you were. Before you admit to who you once were, you can't become who you're looking to be. So I, I'm big on owning up to my parts and situations that played out. When I caught my 10 year sentence, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be maybe within the same week, if not a little bit over a week before I crashed out in the pod. I didn't realize it at the time. I realize it now. I hadn't come to terms mentally with the time the judge gave me. I'm lashing out. I'm arguing with dudes. I'm arguing with the COs. I'm arguing with the guards. And I guess in a sense, you could say that after I was given the 10 years in prison, I was just like, F it. You know what I mean? Screw it. Who, who cares? What y'all going to do to me? I'm locked up. I ain't going home for a decade. I'm going to do what I want to in here. You better stop, Williams. We're going to take your good time. Good time is you can earn up to, I think it's like 52 days a year of early release if you're good. I didn't get none of that. I didn't care nothing about that. Right out the gate, I went from a GCA 4. That's good. Uh, I think it's like good credit allowance or something like that. I went from a one, meaning I could earn up to 52 days a year, knocked off my sentence, to a four, meaning I earned zero. I gave them that right from the gate. Y'all can go ahead and take that good time. Too much is going to happen in the next decade for me to be walking around on eggshells. Oh, no, don't take my 52 days. You know, I've only got 3,650 to do. Uh, please don't take my little 520 or whatever it ended up being, right? I didn't get none of that. I lost it all. So in me not mentally... Coming to terms with what they had done to me, I started lashing out. I started acting out. The becoming aggressive progressed really fast. And I already had a chip on my shoulder coming in off the streets. I'd been in this jail a bunch of different times. Dudes knew who I was. And I would come in. It wasn't like I was the new guy on the block. I would come in and some of these guys were in there the last time I was there. Still waiting to go to prison. Or they had done time with me in other jails or other places. So when I would come in, I would always know people. That's one of those situations where if you've carried yourself as a man, you're going to have to live up to that name, which is a bad thing. Why you care what anybody thinks about you looking back on it now or any of that, I don't understand. When you're known for violence, then, uh, you know, people are going to approach you with violence. A situation that you might usually talk about or come to a reasonable understanding because you're known to snap or act stupid or jump way out of pocket or swing on somebody. If you get into an issue with somebody, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a fight because they know that you're just dumb in the head and that you don't really understand anything but getting punched in the face. Shortly after getting sentenced by the judge, I come back. I get into a fight. My fault. I, I caused it to happen. Yeah, it was 100% my fault. I was just didn't wake up on the right side of the bed that day. I was I more or less hurting inside and I wanted to unleash that possibly feel some pain myself have somebody hurt me i don't know just i mean it kind of it's gonna sound crazy just so i can know that everything was real i become numb to just my existence and my life and what it looking at them four walls every day and eating that nasty food and you know relying on commissary and getting bad news on the phone people ain't answering the phone no more my friends are falling off everybody's done left me so i would intentionally pick fights I get hit and it was like almost like that that pain I endured during that fight was it was almost like a vent. It was like a like a pressure valve. Like it that little bit of pain kept me feeling alive. I get thrown in the hole. Now I'm one of them dudes that goes all the way stupid when you throw me in the hole. At that point, later on in my bid, I calmed down, I become more seasoned, I knew not to do all that dumb shit. But in the beginning, once I go to the hole. I'm already in the hole. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to show my ass. 
I'm going to flood. I'm going to shove stuff in the toilet and flush this toilet 500 times, put a towel underneath my door. When the guard walks by, I'm going to pull the towel and let this two foot of water that's collected inside this cell rush out on his feet, right? I've done this a bunch of different times. I'm going to pop the sprinkler here. They got a fire sprinkler. I'm going to wrap a sheet around it. Boom, pop it and flood the whole cell. I'm going ham in the hole. I'm just going all the way stupid on everything I can. Making slick comments to the guards and when they open my slot, I just throw, you know, whole trays of nasty food. I don't want to eat beans all across the, the floor in the hole, right? They can't really control me. So at this point there, they take me to the psych doctor and they put me on all these meds. I'm on Elevil, Thorazine, Trizodone, Seroquel. They have got me doped up like a zombie. I'm talking, if you ain't never seen nobody do the Thorazine shuffle, They've medicated me to the point now that I'm drooling. I'm talking about in my cell and I'm just all the way out of it. And then later on in the evening before they do the second pill call, they do one in the morning. Then some guys get a lunchtime pill call. That's when they pill call. They come in and they hand out people's medications. Just because you go to jail don't mean you don't stop needing your medication. By the time, you know, 5, 530 would roll around that Thorazine and stuff and all the other pills they gave me in the morning would start to wear off. Then at 5.30, they would give me the Trizodone, Seroquel. But in the mornings, it was just the Elevil and the Thorazine. So it kept me pretty much sedated all day long. They got tired of my bullshit. You're going to take this medication or we're going to spray you. We're going to come in there and beat your ass, eat your pills. So I started eating the pills. Every now and then, I'd cheek it. And when they weren't looking, cheeking is when you keep it inside of your mouth, under your tongue. Ah, I don't got nothing. And they'd walk off and I'd take it and throw it in the toilet. I'm not eating that shit. They caught on to it. They started crushing my pills up, putting them in the cup, adding water to it, and giving me a second cup of water. So now, when I put this stuff in my mouth and I drink, they want to see the cup. There's no way for me to keep it in my mouth. So they're sedating me. They come by on this day in particular that this whole situation took place, and my medication is done worn off, but I'm still asleep. Thorazine, Trizodone, Seroquel, Elevil, those things make you sleep. You could sleep weeks and weeks and weeks, wake up for an hour and go back to sleep for another day. When they do count, they want you on the floor. When I mean on the floor, they want to see you standing up with your feet on the floor in the cell. There's nobody else in the cell but me. Why y'all need me to stand up when you count? I don't understand. Why can't I just move my arm? Hey, I'm here. You know it's not a dummy in the bed. You see there's no hole in the wall. There's no gopher tunnel on the floor. I'm here. But their protocol was you stand for count. They come in, I'm dead asleep, and I hear them blow the whistle, and by now it's the 5.30 in the evening count. Open my eyes, I'm like, damn, I've been asleep a long time. I got up eating my lunch and laid back down, right? So I get up and I'm like, man, they ain't feed yet? Like, what are they doing count early? What are they trying to get off early? The tray's running late. I'm like, what's going on? So I get up and I'm in my boxes, nothing but a white pair of boxes, my shower shoes, and I walk over to the door and I look out, and I see the guards coming down, and they're marking, all right, one in this cell. Hey, stand up. Guy stands up. Yup, we got Blankenship in this cell. This dude's in this cell. They're getting a count to make sure ain't nobody left without them knowing. They get to my cell, and I'm like, hey, man, what's up with the trays? We're doing count, sir. Meal's already been served. What? We already served with dinner. Dinner's been served, man. You must have, I don't know. We're doing count. We're not dealing with uh, trays now. That's all been served. See, oh, y'all didn't y'all didn't bring me no tray, man. I didn't get no tray. I guess whatever reason, y'all skipped my side and get no tray. We're not feeding now. Feeding's already been done. That's that's dead. That's over with. You know what I mean? We're doing count. And they keep it moving. I'm like, yo, I need a tray. They keep going. I yell down to the dudes in the cells next to me. I'm like, yo, they fed y'all. Yeah, we already ate. They brought hot dogs through. What? They you stop joking, man. I didn't get no tray. Oh, that's crazy, bro. They ain't feed you. No, nah, they ain't give me no dinner tray. Hey, God, I need my tray. They just keep counting. Next time I know, I see the door slide open and the two guards walk out and they shut the door. Now I'm looking out. All I see is the control booth and the control booth has got tinted glass on it. So you can't see them in there. But I know there's guards in there and they can see me at my door and they can hear me yelling. So I'm yelling out, hey, I need my tray. I need my tray. They're not answering me. They've already left. Now there's no officer. I look out into this this day room and there's just metal tables bolted. There's the pay phones on the wall. I look over in the corner, there's a trash bag 
with the trays that they collected. These little styrofoam trays you get like at a restaurant to get your food to go. That's what they were serving us in. I start kicking the door. I back my back up to it. Boom, 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 boom. I'm kicking the door. They come over to intercom. Williams, what's the problem? Y'all didn't bring me no tray, man. I need a tray. I didn't get no dinner. Everybody got a tray. I didn't get no tray. I was asleep. Y'all didn't give me no tray. Everybody got a tray. Feeding is completed. We're not feeding no more. You got a tray. Boom, 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 boom. I go back to kicking the door. William, stop kicking the door. Mm -mm. Boom, boom, boom. What's going on now is I've created an incident. These guards can't go home until this incident that's taking place is under control. They can't leave and just tell the next shift, hey, good luck. Williams is spazzing out trying to kick the metal door down in there. Yeah, he's going nuts. He says he didn't get fed. We didn't feed him, but we're saying we did. Uh, yeah, y'all got to deal with that. No, they have to stay until that situation's under control. I'm kicking the door. Boom, boom. 15 minutes passes. My foot sore. I'm still kicking this damn door. With everything I got, boom, boom. Then I yell at the door, bring my tray, bring my tray. I'm screaming, making all this commotion. Now other dudes are kicking the door. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody in the hole. Not everybody. Probably 70% of us are kicking the door. It sounds like a construction site in here. These metal doors are clanging. And when you hit, with that day room being empty, it just echoes throughout the whole building. It's so loud. Dudes screaming, yelling, ah, just acting nuts. You got some weirdos in the hole. CO comes in. William, stop kicking the door. Bring me my tray. We fed. You got a tray. I didn't get no tray, man. I was asleep. You ate, you're not getting no second tray. Nice try. Don't kick the door no more. We can come here, come in here on you. I don't care nothing about that. Bring me a tray. Look, man, the, the kitchen is shut down. There ain't no more trays. That's dead. If you did, if you didn't get a tray, you need to make sure you're awake next time. Man, you just don't not feed me because I'm asleep. Boom, boom. He's standing right there. I go back to kicking the door. We got something for your ass. You better stop kicking that door, man. I want to go home. Stop kicking the door. Boom, boom, boom. I go back to kicking the door. He leaves out. Another 10, 15 minutes straight. I'm just kicking this door. I've got everybody riled up. Boom, boom, boom. Kicking it. So I'm trying to kick this door off the hinges, but it's a metal door. It's not going nowhere. You can kick all day, kick the rest of your life. Only in a rare few occasions have I seen them doors come down, and that's when they were defective or old. I'm kicking the door, and I hear the door outside slide open. Boom, boom, boom. I turn around, and I look, and then they come. About eight of them. Headed to my cell. Got the little camera just like they did last time. There's sergeants and, you know, different CO. Well, actually, they call them watch commanders, a shift commander. White shirt. They come in. What's the problem? I didn't get fed. Everybody got a tray. I didn't get a tray, man. I wouldn't be doing all this if I got a tray. It's not that serious. I'm telling you. I'm telling the white shirt. I didn't get a tray. I don't know if they weren't paying attention. They got distracted. He did it intentionally. Whatever reason, they didn't knock on my door and say, Williams, get him, get your dinner. It's child time. They kept it moving. White shirt tells me everybody was fed. The guard said everybody was fed. You need to stop this dumb shit so the guards can go home. You're causing, you know, a big ass scene in here. You got everybody kicking the door. Everybody riled up. Chill out and lay down, man. I said, no, I'm not laying down. Y'all didn't feed me. You've already been fed. He's as high as you can go up the ladder when it comes to the guards there. I know there's no more talking to y'all people. I'm a human. You're just not going to feed me? You don't get no commissary in the hole. The last thing I ate was what we had at lunch. So I'm not going to eat again until tomorrow morning? Boom, boom. I start kicking the door in front of the white shirt. William, stop or we're going to spray you when you're going in the chair. I'm Nah, feed me. Nah, you're going to go in the chair if you don't stop kicking the door. Boom, 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 boom. All right. All of them leave out. Even the guy with the camcorder, they all leave out. Yeah, y'all go get me a tray. That's the best case scenario. All you got to do is go over to the kitchen, get me two hot dogs, my little cake and whatever we had that day that I didn't get, put it on my tray and bring it to me. Uh -uh. They come in, he's got the OC spray and he's got the chair. For y'all that don't know what the chair is, the chair is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little black, hard plastic chair, real low to the ground, on wheels, that they sit you in, they strap your arms, they strap straps across your waist, they strap your legs, they put a bag over your head in case you're spitting or trying to bite anybody, and they strap you in this chair. Now, they're only supposed to leave you in this chair for a set amount of time. You're supposed to, I've seen guys, and I've seen it, not as bad as what they did to me, but I think it was like an hour they'd usually leave you in the chair. 
You calm down, then they take you out. I've seen guys sit in the chair six hours. I've seen the guys sit in the chair 10 hours. And what they would do is once they put you in the chair, they roll you out in the center of the day room, the pod, the empty ass area where nobody else is. And you sit there and all the inmates just sit there and stare at you. And you're strapped in this chair. If you got to use the bathroom, they strip you down naked. If you got to use the bathroom, you use it on yourself. You got to poop, you poop in the chair. If you got to pee, you pee in the chair. They're not letting you up out this chair. Meanwhile, you're butt ball naked, all your goodness just hanging out, and you're strapped in this chair with dudes just staring at you, right? Cousin, my daughter tells me, I'm going to spray you if you don't stop. I don't care nothing about that spray. That shit don't scare me. You know what I mean? Like, I've been sprayed before. You think it's the first time I've been sprayed? Usually when they spray you, it's just, they spray a little bit. I continue. Go put you in the chair. Nah, don't put me in the chair. Don't put me in the chair. I just want my tray. Go put you in the chair. Nah, you're not putting me in the chair. Oh, no, it, we're past all that now. You're going in the chair. Nah, man, I'm not going in the chair. I start pleading with him. I don't want to go in this chair. I've seen it in the past. I've been in the chair. Like, don't put me in the chair, man. Just bring me my tray. Feed me. You know what I mean? I got a mom out there. I got a kid out there. I got people that love me. Feed me. I deserve to eat. Like, y'all messed up and didn't feed me. Williams, you need to cuff up and come out so we can put you in the chair. I'm not cuffing up, but I'm not going in the chair. You are cuffing up and you are going in the chair. Nah, man, it's not what's happening, man. I'm not doing it. Like, y'all better lay y'all's boots up because when y'all come to this door, I'm going to start trying to stretch y'all out. I swear for God, once that door pops, y'all better pop. When the door swings, y'all better swing because it's going down. All right, Williams, last time, present yourself to be cuffed up. Not cuffing up. Just like yesterday's story. Not cuffing up. Nah, ain't happening. Do what you do. Administer the OC spray. Grab my shirt, cover my face. They don't do the psst. They take that damn can, crack the door, stick it in there, and they drench me with this stuff. They shoot it, and this orange, yellow stuff comes out. It hits all over me. It hits the back wall. It's all over the floor. This shit is everywhere. I am choking. I am gagging. I'm not in a position to where I can barely breathe. My nose is running. I got stuff running down the back of my throat. Every my, my lungs feel like they're on fire. My eyes are burning. My skin is burning where it's made contact with me. I'm done. There is no fight. When they come in here, they can do whatever they want. I'm in the middle of the cell, and I took my shirt and covered my eyes, but the stuff is all over my face. Now I'm trying to wipe my eyes, which is the worst thing in the world. Do not wipe it. If you wipe it, it's almost like rubbing lotion in your skin. I'm trying to wipe the stuff out of my eyes, and then I see, you know, I just get tackled. Boom! I go back on the bed. I'm trying to cover my face, and as I'm laying there, you got a big dude standing in the doorway, so the guy with the camera can't see past him, and they're just hitting me, punching me in my sides, punching me in my face, punching me in the sides of my head, but I can't see which guards are hitting me because they've sprayed this stuff all over me. Now it's all in my face. They're slipping in the cell, sliding, trying to get me up because the stuff is all over the floor. They get me to the door. They got me in handcuffs. They snatch my boxes down, pull my boxes off, bring me out, and sit me in the chair. Being in the chair is torturing itself to begin with. But the worst part of all of this before it even starts is y'all haven't rinsed me. They don't take me to the shower. They don't take water and rinse my eyes or rinse this chemical off my skin that is, I feel like I'm on fire as this stuff is setting in on my skin, right? They bring me out and they sit me down in this chair, right? And prior to that, all I told you, all I had on was my boxers. I grabbed my shirt off the counter, took my shirt Took it like holding it like a rag and covered my face with it when they shot it. So this stuff is all over my belly, all over my legs, on my head. It's ran down my eyes, eyebrows, you name it. It's all over me. They get me in the chair and they strap me down, right? And I'm telling them I'm still coughing, like coughing to the point that I'm throwing up foam. I don't really have any food in me. You know, I've already, I ate lunch five, six hours ago. There's nothing to throw up. I'm like coughing up this foam, Ugh. like hacking. I'm dying. Guards are coughing. Dudes in other cells are coughing because they done sprayed way too much. It's going through the vents and messing everybody else up. They put me in the chair and I'm expecting them to roll me like in the middle of the pod like they always have and just make me sit there and look stupid. No. They roll me out in the hallway so the other inmates can't see me. And this is a long hallway that goes to general population and the other end goes to what we call master control or center circle. It's an area where there's that's where every, that's like the brain of the jail. And then you got branches that go off into different areas that are wings and pods and whatnot. They roll me halfway down this hallway. And as we're going down the hallway, all I can think is, man, they're going to take me somewhere and beat the shit out of me. 
I can't see. I can't breathe. I'm on fire. They're going to beat me. We get halfway down the hallway. They push the chair upside the wall and they walk off and they leave me. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. Hey, man, y'all need to rinse me off. Why you do this? Why y'all put me in the chair? And they all walked out. They left. I watched the officers that were on that shift leave, walk right by me, covering their faces, taking their shirts and covering their faces because I've got this OC spray on me and just walking by me, it'll burn your eyes. It'll burn your lungs. You're going to get like a contact just from being near me. That had to be maybe 6.30 that night when I seen them guards finally leave. Then I see the new shift come on. And I, I'm looking forward to my foggy, hazed eyes that are swollen and bloodshot and burning. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking down to this big glass window where center control is. And I see that white shirt talking to the guards that are coming on. He's telling them about the situation that took place with me. Because he's about to leave too. They come by me. Better part of 30 minutes, 45 minutes has passed. Hey man, how long am I going to be in this chair, man? Y'all need to take me to the shower and rinse me off. I'm on fire, man. I can't breathe my eyes. They don't say a word to me. I can hear the dorms and the pods and the other areas of the jail opening up and everybody making noise. Hey, yo, bring me a tang packet. Hey, yo, let me get a soup. I can hear this coming from different wings as I sit in this hallway in this chair. I didn't know how long I had been in that chair. It felt like forever. I realized how long I'd been in that chair. When I seen the officers from the day before come walking back down the hallway and the officers from that shift leaving, they left me out in that hallway the entire shift. 12 hours, I sat in that chair, pissed on myself, shit on myself, felt like I was blind. My lungs felt like I had breathed in fire. My skin was rashed, red, irritated. Everything on me burned to the point that I just got used to it. White shirt comes in. You good now? Please take me to the shower, man. I'm not bucking no more. I'm not yelling. I don't care about it. I'm not getting that tree. All I want to do is just go to the shower. Please let me go to the shower and rinse off, man. It's been 12 hours, man. Please. Are you good now? Yeah, I'm good, man. We got to worry about any more problems. You can kick the door. You're going to act crazy. Just take me to the shower, man. And I'm not, no sir, no sir, no none of that. I'm just, man, take me to the shower, man. Get me out this chair and take me to the shower. Calls in a couple more guards. They come in, put gloves on. Got a little mask on because they don't want to breathe in the stuff that's all over me. Not to mention I'm pissing shit in the chair. What was I supposed to do? I had to use the bathroom. The chair's got little holes drilled in the bottom of it where you sit. So all that stuff will drain out on the floor. To get me up. Put me in cuffs. You're out of cuffs when you got the chair because they got your arms strapped down. They cuff me. Lead me over to the shower cold ass shower no hot water i step in there in handcuffs they leave me in the entire time so i can't take my hands and scrub myself all i can do is just kind of rotate in the shower in these cuffs and try to rinse this stuff off of me after about two three minutes you would think even though the water was cold i could have stayed in there forever man i'm drinking the water that's coming out i'm stretching my eyes trying to get it on and i really what i really need is something i need my soap i need my washcloth i need to be able to Wash all this stuff off me. Oh, two, three minutes. They let me just stand in that cold-ass water. Middle of winter. So however cold the water is outside is how cold it is coming through that spigot. I'm just standing there. The water running on me in handcuffs. Not realizing that I've got all this anger because of things I haven't come to terms with. Things from the streets. Things with going on with the court proceedings and the time I've received. They pulled me out of the shower. Don't dry me down. Don't put no boxes on me. Lead me over to my cell. My cell still got all this OC spray in it. Just opening the door was like, it was like being sprayed all over again. I tell them I can't go in that cell, man. There's spray everywhere. We're going to bring you some cleaning stuff. So you're just going to stick me back in that cell with all that, all that pepper spray everywhere. We'll bring you some cleaning stuff. They put me back in and I'm just standing there. I go over to the countertop. Get a pair of boxers, pull a pair of boxers on, grab a shirt, put a shirt on. About an hour goes by, they bring a mop bucket to my cell, a spray bottle, one of these clear spray bottles and some cleaning rags, and tell me go ahead and clean that up. 
I take the other shirt I initially had, rinse it out in the sink a whole bunch of times, try to get the spray out of it, wrap it around my face. I'm, ca I'm, ga I'm gagging and coughing. My eyes are burning again because I'm in the cell with all this spray. And I commence to cleaning up the mess they made. They come in, give me a new mat because my old mat is just ruined. It's got the spray's been on it for over 12 hours. They're going to have to do something with it. I don't know if they clean it. They throw it away. They bring me a new mat, bring me new sheets. We don't want no more problems out of you, Williams. I just stared at him. They ended up shipping me from the hole. I never got out the hole. I transferred from that hole to prison. Yeah, the chair was one of the most, uh, the ass whooping was nothing. The ass whooping they gave me in the cell when they had me on the bed, the punching, the knees, the elbows. Like, it sucks when you get punched and you're in handcuffs and you just gotta, I mean, imagine putting your hands behind your back and just letting me punch you in your face or letting several people just start punching you. It sucks when you're cuffed and they're hitting you. Sucks worse when you got the OC spray all on top of you. You're hungry. You're doing what you think is right. You're angry. The whole time I was sitting in that chair, I wasn't really feeling none of the effects of the punches. All I felt was the spray. I didn't go back in the chair after that. They even mentioned a chair like, huh, I'm going to sit down straight up. You ain't never been in that chair. It's a, it's a slow form of torture. That's why you're only supposed to be in that thing like an hour. No, they left me in there the whole shift. After that, that I never had contact with an officer if I was in handcuffs. At no point ever did they allow me out my cell without handcuffs on because they knew. And I had told several of them when they walked by. First chance I get, <laughs> I ain't got these cuffs on. You like putting me in that chair? Yeah, first chance I get. Yeah, I'm going back to court behind this one. I ever see one of y'all outside this cell and I ain't got no cuffs on. Crazy ass times, man. So that was a rough video to go through, man. Uh, those are the things that I don't like to think about. Rest in peace to that young man that lost his life. To all y'all that sprayed me, beat me up, and put me in that chair. Y'all some pieces of shit. I know you guards watch this. Correction officers watch it. I know some of the ones that did that shit to me this day are going to watch that. I ain't deserve all that, man. And I hope y'all get whatever y'all got coming in life. I hope y'all's karma catches up to you. And I hope that you do something in life to end your dumb ass up in the chair. Hope you get sprayed and sat out in the hallway like a desk for people to walk by while you're butt naked. Covered in all your body fluids for 12 hours straight while trying to breathe through OC spray. Yeah, I'd love to see y'all do it for just five minutes. Y'all wouldn't be able to. You'd go crazy. As y'all know, it is Friday, Friday, Friday. That means it is payday, payday, payday. You know I got to get this money. Got to get my guys paid. So glad it's Friday. Y'all have no clue. It is over with. Time for the weekend. Time with the family. But yeah, that's today's stories. Hope y'all enjoyed them. Hope you learned something. And I hope that it makes a change. I hope that before you leave out your house today and do something stupid, go sell you some narcotics. Go make a couple flips, hit a couple switches. Do this or do that. You think twice about where you can end up and what can happen to you. Prison or penitentiary ain't no playground. The people do what they want to you and you think you're going to stop it. Huh. You ain't going to do nothing but whatever they tell you to do. And the end result is going to be whatever they decide it's going to be. You can buck. You can tell them I ain't coming out. You can do whatever you want. And in the end, they always win. They ain't never lost. The undefeated have been since the beginning of time. They're never going to lose. Enjoy this world. You don't want no parts of that one. So anyways, these jails, institutions, detention centers, they're all just crazier world inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Y'all some shit for what y'all did to me, man. Y'all some shit for what y'all did to that young man. God will see that y'all get y'alls.